Hi, I'm Victor Margiotta, and this is The Community Show. My guest is Jeffrey Cabelli, and uh, he's into film production, and he's been doing a lot of great stuff, and I can't wait to just jump right in and start talking to Jeff. So, Jeff, you, thank you very much for coming. Thank you for having me, and, this is, and a nice uh, introduction, too. This is exciting, I'm telling you. I feel like uh, you're almost like a mini-me, you know? <laughs> Uh, everything I've talked about you and uh, or I've seen you on Facebook and uh, you know every time I've uh, found something new about you it's, it seems like we have a lot in common. So well, I, there's plenty of fun. I put myself out there uh, as we were talking about off camera. Um, I'm I'm everywhere. I know. It's <laughs> Unfortunately, amazing. unfortunately. Yeah, you know, I, I, people used to say to me, "You're the jack of all trades, but master of none." And uh, you know, I, it's funny because when I was in kindergarten, I got my kindergarten uh, report card, and it said, the teacher said, I don't know if this is good or bad, but Victor <laughs> is into everything. <laughs> so, and it's true. I, for some reason, I, I just like to, you know, get into everything. Everything is, is very cool to me. Although I am a pizza man in a, you know, Italian restaurant, I never feel like that. that's who I am, you know what I mean? I feel like I'm... Uh, you know, a broad spectrum of, of people, which is great for the field that you know, I'd like to be in, but, you know, you always have to do what you have to do. So. Well, you may be into a lot of things, but you're very personable and easy to talk to. Well, I appreciate that. So maybe that's your thing. I don't and know, it's but. funny that uh, we just met each other, but I feel like I've known you, you know. And, uh, Same. It's, yeah. It's incredible. So let's start off with your family. Tell me where you grew up and uh, talk about your parents a little bit. So I was born and raised in Mayapec. My family is are from uh, my family is from Yonkers. My grandfather was from Harlem, so they just keep moving up. And I guess that's that's typical, right? Yeah. Um, and now I I was living in Peekskill for a time, but now I moved to Carmel because I got married, uh, two amazing stepkids, and a new baby on the way. So oh, that's yeah. No, so far, a full life for yeah. sure. Well, you're definitely a family-oriented person. Family means a lot to you, and. Uh, to me, that's probably the most important thing. It's the cornerstone of society is the family. And how we interact with people is all, you know, comes from your interaction with your family. So talk a little about your dad. Man, uh, my dad is the, probably the main reason who I am, you know, the good and the bad. Mm -hmm. um, I, I know my dad's a, a family man. That's, that's kind of how you started this. Uh, you know, when I say family man, it's you, you learn so many things at the dinner table, right? I mean, that's where you can learn uh, respect and values, how to talk, um, when not to talk. You know, that was uh, also really important. Mm. Um, but I think what, you know, I, I, maybe this is why I'm a family person, because I saw what a family unit was able to do. So my great-grandfather moved here from Italy, raised his son in Harlem. Like I said, moved up to Yonkers. But each step of the way, my, my dad moving from Yonkers to Mayapak was really about creating a better life for the next generation. Um, my grandfather did not, as far as I know, definitely did not go to college, not sure if he graduated high school. Um, had an interesting life that I won't touch on. Uh, but my dad was really the first child to go to college. And it was important for his children to go to college. And I find that a privilege to be brought up as a child with the expectation at six, seven, eight years old to go to college. Um, and I know we'll go into this, but you know, just in even doing mission trips where I go to these underserved countries, there's not even a dream. There's not even a notion of higher education. And that's, that's not a legacy, but that's something I want to continue. I mm -hmm. want my kids to know that the opportunities are endless as long as you do the work. Probably the main foundation is education, um, but really it's, it's having a foundation in, in God or whatever faith that you have in, yep. in family and education and then your, your life experiences. And those things are going to shape you and hopefully you'll not only raise a better generation than the one before you, but hopefully you'll have an impact on the world that makes other people's lives easier and, and whatever that means for them. Well, there's no doubt that knowledge is power. The more you know, the better you are. And they always say how, you know, that the CEOs of companies and, and the, the most brilliant people are the ones with the greatest vocabulary. 
because they're able to use their words, they're able to express themselves, you know, with words. Mm -hmm. They're able to, you know, know what they're feeling because they have the words to explain how they're feeling or what they're thinking. So, you know, first off the bat, I mean, vocabulary, I think, is, is one of the greatest tools of education. Well, I love using big <laughs> words. It's a great way to show <laughs> off and, and well, make somebody think you may be smarter than you are. <laughs> Um, no, it's, it's important to know a lot of that stuff. And even, you know, I think even what's happening now, you know, with the invention of Internet and, and having a video that can explain anything, like you can find out information anywhere, but it might be more important not only to have as much knowledge as possible, but to know how to curate it, to say that's, that's information that I don't need. I need mm. this part and I need to use it for this, this part of my life because you can be well educated in something that you're not using and now you're just good at conversations, which may be good for some people like me and you. Um, but I think it's important to, to know how to use the knowledge in the right way. You know what I mean? Like to really to say, okay, I don't need all that. I need this, and now let me apply it. Yeah. That might be as important for especially people now. Yeah. I want to get into using um, audio, uh, audio video as a tool to, to, to do things like you did in Kenya. But... Talk first about um, how you got into video production. I'm going to make this as quick as possible, okay. but it's a long story because <laughs> I've always been, and this kind of goes back to my dad and my family, and one of the things that happened is I was raised to be a jock. I mean, you talk about dreams that were implanted in me early on. Mm -hmm. It was, you should be a quarterback and smart so you can go play for Notre Dame. <laughs> I mean, that was the dream that was put in me early on. Now, I thought life was all about being a jock. As you get older and you enter like 13, you see people getting a little bigger than you, a little more athletic, and you go, maybe that's not my future. I had an English teacher who encouraged me to be more artistic, which I was afraid to do. Um, old school Italian family. Um, you would just get made fun of if you went into art, especially as a kid. I was a published writer at 16 in, in a... In a like a local magazine that propelled me to be a news editor in college for the Viking News at Westchester. Um, and then I just got into expressing myself in that art form. So then I wanted to get into Emerson College and they told me I couldn't get in because the film program was too difficult. Try radio and then switch your degree, which is exactly what I did. Um, so I got into film kind of by accident, but I stumbled into art and especially writing and then visualizing it. Um, you know, I even took classes in f like photojournalism. So I was already starting to marry this idea of a visual with words. Mm. And I think where I'm at now is, is just telling stories. I mean, that's really when people ask like, what makes you different than everybody else? Well, everybody can go buy the fancy cameras, but are you interested in telling a compelling story? And that's something that I don't want to say is missing right mm -hmm. now, but that's not the focus of most production companies. Yeah. You know, as a kid, I, I mean, I love TV. I, I always wanted to be on TV. You know, my favorite shows growing up, of course, you know, when we were kids, the Brady Bunch and, uh, you know, MASH. And, and it's funny, we were, all of a sudden I'm on this link with um, Barney Miller, the, the cop show. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it was always serious topics, but they, they always were able to inject humor, you know. And I think that's, uh, it's a beautiful thing. I mean, my family, as bad as it got, we were always able to inject humor, you know. And humor is, is the icebreaker. It's, it's, I mean, we all want to laugh. We all want to be in a good mood. We all want to be happy. I think that's, it's, it's, all, it's ingrained in us. But... Um, I think that was the value of Archie Bunker. I think, yeah. you know, he, they, they were actually really tackling some big social issues, but it was such a funny show. You <laughs> it know, it, it allowed you to feel okay with going into something deep because you were laughing along with it. Um, it's, it's hard to do. That's not an easy thing. No. Okay, now fast forward to um, your work in Kenya. Talk a little bit about that. So Kenya, you know, I'm... The only way I can preface this is saying, like, sometimes an opportunity comes and it just leads you to where you never thought you would end up. I never thought I would travel to Kenya. I went on a mission trip to the Dominican Republic thinking I was just going to film a trip, go home, cash a check, call it a day. Then I was asked to go back, and then I was asked to go to Haiti, and then I met another missionary, and these people are just running these, these different organizations to do good. And my company's called Good For You Productions. And I'm like, <laughs> well... 
man, maybe there's something there. Like, I get tired of what's on TV. I mean, I know we talked about some better examples, but I came up in the MTV generation. I mean, I just saw garbage yep. on TV, you know, every day, like being blasted in my face. It was almost like intentionally being bad. And I was even in the industry, and I just, I just didn't like working on those things. It wasn't fulfilling. It wasn't, it wasn't, um, it wasn't compelling to my own soul. So I wanted to do something good. So then I end up in, in Kenya after just meeting and meeting and meeting. And I, I've been to Kenya twice. And when you go to Kenya, it's such a long trip. I mean, door to door, it, it took me 48 hours wow. to get from my home in New York to the, the place I was staying at in Kenya. Um, so you can't go there for a weekend or a week. You have to go there for a couple of weeks mm. because of just the transition. Uh, I think that allows you to get really ingrained in the place that you're staying and you make friends. I mean, you know, I'll, I'll share a space with somebody and I'm not talking about the missionaries that I went with, but the locals. When we were in Kenya, I got to know the Maasai warriors. So the Maasai are the, the people that everybody sees wearing the African garb, holding a stick on one leg. But I got to like know them and know them so well that they felt comfortable putting their clothes on me, mm. giving me a stick, mm. like asking, and then I'm giving them a camera. And I, I, I have a picture or video where, you know, I'm holding their stuff and, and he's holding mine. And I guess, I guess what I'm trying to say about that is I get sucked into that because I love having relationships yeah. and meaningful ones. And even if that was for a moment in my life, it's something that I'm not going to forget. And hopefully they don't forget it either. And along the way, we're doing good. Like the whole idea is, is progress. Um, they have a need and we have a need. And I, and I, and I talk about this all the time. And I don't know if this is going to be off tangent, but on mission trips, people always think they're going there to help. Oftentimes they come back being helped more than the people they were trying to serve. And I, I can't really explain that without going uh -huh. too in-depth or without just telling you, you got to go there yourself and experience yeah. that. Yeah. I've never been the same person once I started doing mission trips. It, it's just a new idea of, I talked about privilege before and being a dream. I mean, when you come back after being in Africa for almost a month, I mean, I'm pressing a button and my car starts. I'm turning a, a faucet and I'm getting clean water or a, a hot shower. You know, I press a button in my phone and there's food there. I didn't even get off the couch. I mean, that's stuff that's just part of our everyday life. And it's not something to feel bad for, but it's just something to go back. And no matter how bad your day is, to be like, yeah, but you know what? I can still get a pizza from, from Paradise Restaurant and, every, and everything's cool. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. <clears throat> you know, the amount of progress that we've made and where we're at, like you said, being able to just sit there and, you know, these are all things that we have to thank God for, that we have the ability to do these things. Not to say, oh, I did it, you mm -hmm. know, and, uh, but to say that, you know, thank God for giving me the ability to do this, you know, and I think we get away from that. And, um, you know, I have to take a moment to thank Joe and James for doing the show because, you know, I'd be sitting here by myself if it wasn't for those guys. And they do a great job with Catholic Peekskill. They use this medium as a tool to get the message out there, you know, and, um, you know, is it a godless society? I don't know. Um, <clears throat> I wish people were more into God than they are, you know, and I think you're, what you're doing is, is it, it's beautiful that you know, want people to see that there are people struggling out there and that we need to do something. You know, if everybody did some kind of volunteer work that did something to help, you know, the whole premise of this show is to get involved, you know, not just to talk about it, but to do it, you know, to even just to be nice to your neighbor, you know what I mean? Oh, it could start out so small. It, it, that's the basic thing. You can talk about, I want to save the world, but if you're not nice to your neighbor, you know, compromise, you know, be nice to each other, you know, and it's, it's not easy sometimes. You know, now that we're in a position where everybody can think for themselves, you know, I don't feel like people join enough clubs, they don't go to church enough. You know, you have to go and be around people to be able to, you know, experience uh, understanding, to be patient with people, to talk to them, to listen to them. I think being a good listener is, is very important, you know. People need, 
Now, you were talking about your wife is doing something with people to help them, especially in these times now. Why don't you touch oh, on man. that Oh, man, yeah, bit? and I can even just, just sort of piggyback off of what you were talking about because my wife runs a retreat. Her, her brand is called Survival, you know, a play on revival. Um, and since the pandemic has started, she's done four retreats. Um, you know, selling out everyone. It's not like a thousand people are there. This is not a Tony Robbins thing. You know, this is 15 <laughs> people with social distancing. Um, but everybody's coming there for the same thing. You can sort of fit into these different categories of anxiety, depression, feeling lost, not having a purpose. And I think what you were touching on, it's not so much, you could, I, my belief, and I definitely have to preface what I'm about to say with, this is my belief, that you're never godless, you just may be disconnected at the moment. And it's on you, by the way, mm. because the God that I believe in is, is, is always ready and it's just kind of waiting. Like, you know, if I felt like I didn't have God, he was just looking at me and like, yeah, I'm you don't even here. know, I'm right here. <laughs> like, come on, you know, wake up. Um, but what she's what she's doing is giving people a space where they could be heard it's it's, it's on what you just touched on yeah i made a joke one time when when facebook invented facebook live i was like you know if everybody went live at the same time who's watching <laughs> and and that's kind of my take on society right now is everybody has a voice and good reason i want people to talk as much as possible free speech is important to me as well but everybody's talking and it feels like nobody's listening so these people, they're, they're men and women, they're, they're kids and their parents, they're, they're whoever, they're coming to this retreat because they're like, you know what, I, wa I want something different. I need a place to go to, even if it's for a day, where I could reassess what's going on right now. Let me just put everything aside. Let me turn off the phone. Let me get away from my current reality. And let me actually see if my story, and this is what we talk about in the retreat, if my story is reality. Am I telling myself a story or is this really happening? And it's just a discovery process. The, the biggest thing that I just want to end on is this is about, I, I love your show that it wants to get people involved. The biggest thing though, and, and I, I wonder what you say about this, because we talk about this all weekend, is you have to take care of yourself first. Because if you're a mess and you go out into the world, you're spreading more mess. <laughs> So self-care is important. Get yourself right so that now you can help the world. You know, I think somebody said even, um, you know, you want to save the world first. I think it was Mother Teresa, right? She said, if you want to save the world, first save your family, save mm -hmm. your house. Mm -hmm. Get your house in order yeah. and then start going outward. Um, but that's, that's how I relate what you were saying, yeah. too, you know. Just uh, how can we get a hold of you or how can we see you? What are some of the ways we can... Uh... It's, it's going to be a Google because there's okay. so many handles I could say and right. so many go to this link and go to this link. Mm -hmm. I, I want to promote, first of all, my company, which has been around for 12 years, Good For You Productions. Okay. Just Google that. And Whether uh, you put the number four or F-O-R, it doesn't right. matter. It's going to come up. And search me. Search Jeffrey Cobelli. Mm -hmm. um, everything, uh, I make it very easily accessible for anybody to find me about anything. And what is the main uh, objective of the company? Good For You Productions is really meant to be an advocate for the other person's mission. So we've worked with nonprofits. We do commercials. We do promo videos. We're, we're developing some reality shows right now because it's, it's pitch time. Everybody, the, the playing field has leveled and networks are looking for stuff. So if like, you have an idea, reality show, whatever it is, networks are listening. They'll, they'll take a look at it. A couple of years ago, they wouldn't. Yeah. But it's really to, to tell a story. I mean, that's what I stress all the time. There's a story to tell, whether it's a product or a person, and people want to know the story. It's the emotions that matter. It's the feelings that count. And it's funny because, you know, when we were kids, I mean, I'm a little older than you, but, you know, it was more like sitcoms and, and real, not reality TV. That's what it's become now. And, you know, I'm a little turned off to some of those reality shows. I, <clears throat> Even some of the sports now, with all the money they make, you know, I always say, oh, I'm not going to watch baseball this year because, it, and then once it comes on, you can't help it. Like you said, you know, we were raised playing baseball and football and, and all those sports, and it's ingrained in us. We can't help it. I love the game, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? I love to watch. I love, you know, for me now, it's the golf. I'm, I'm hooked on the golf. <laughs> 
I can't get enough of it, really. I have it on 12 hours a day here at the restaurant. Do you play and, as well? And yeah, I, I play. And, um, you know, even, I don't care what it is. If it's golf, I'm in, you know. And um, now you're into baseball and you're thinking about getting a team together. I manage one team. We are the Westchester Bla Braves. We play in the Hudson Valley NABA. How do you have time to do that? I don't have time for anything, Victor. <laughs> I uh, I just don't sleep. No, I, it, you know, it's, I, I would, if I could make enough money, I would be a coach in time management. Wow. Because I know when people look at, I mean, I just filled out a bio because I'm, I'm, I'm trying to apply or nominate for something. I don't want to talk about it yet. Okay. But um, I had to like create, and I'm, even I'm writing it down, I'm like, how the hell did I do all that? I, I make the time. Mm -hmm. I don't find time, I make the time. Well, and you don't stress about it. You just say, okay, now this is the time for this, you know. I've learned how to deal with stress. Because there's two stresses, right? There's a stress that gives you anxiety, that's mm -hmm. a bad stress. There's a you stress when you try to do something that is for your benefit that takes you out of your comfort zone. I'm sure when you first started doing this show, it was super stressful and high anxiety. But that wasn't a bad stress. That was a you no, stress. Yeah. And that, that was better for you. It, you know, that was a way for you to, f to get closer to your higher calling or your purpose. Well, like, people talk about fear all the time. Fear is, is a double-edged sword. You know? Fear can trap you. It can cause you to be depressed and afraid. Or fear can motivate you. I got to pay my bills. I got <laughs> I got to do my job. I got to do what I have to do, you know. So, you know, it's it's a fine line and um, you know, I love the fact that your wife is helping people and um, you know, it's 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 tough. The situation that you know, this whole pandemic created, we hope that people can come out of it, you know, and and you know, I was just in the store the other day and I might have got a little too close to this person and, you know, she didn't get upset, but she kind of gave me the, you know, and I understand. I understand that people are still concerned about what's going on and, I, you know, I didn't, pff, I didn't get mad. I didn't say, oh, well, you know, you know, you just try to be understanding to people, you know. It's like road rage, you know, you want to stay away from that kind of stuff. If somebody's in a hurry, well... Let them be in a hurry, you know. If, if they're going to get pulled over, that's their problem, you know. But you can't add to that, you know, situation. People so. want to be heard. The person that you're talking about wanted to let you know something, and they wanted to know that you heard them. You, you backed up or removed mm -hmm. yourself. That was it. That's all it takes. Yeah, that's all. And it's, and it's not a confrontation. Um, I just think that people need an outlet to talk to somebody who is not only listening, but actively listening, that is actually taking in, absorbing it, taking the time for their response. If somebody's just quick and responding to you, there's a good chance they weren't even listening. Yeah. They were just waiting to talk. And th there's a clear difference. All right. So what's on the, uh, the table today? Well, you're having a, a, a baby. That's I am having a baby. Uh, they, they keep on saying the due date's May 18th, okay. but I'm telling you, that baby moves so much. <laughs> um, we're pretty sure he's coming out earlier. That's funny. Um, I have my baseball season come up. Um, look out for possibly a rea reality show coming out, some documentaries. I will also like to uh, reignite my podcast. I would love to get some comedy shows again this year. Uh, there's going to be a lot of stuff coming up, for sure. You know, I tried comedy. Turns out I'm not that funny. But uh, <laughs> I Everybody has it. funny in them. This is what we talked about on the phone. You just didn't fail enough. That's the worst part about being a comedian. You have to fa it's just, I think that's why I like comedy and baseball, because you can fail 70% of the time and still be considered successful. That's right. If you're batting 300, that's pretty good. Pretty good, yeah. you know. So... <laughs> But you're getting, you're striking out, you're getting out most of the time. So it's, it's like, I, I think like learning rejection and learning what failure may feel like is also important. If there's anything, if there's any knock on this current generation is that it's, they want too much of a quick fix. They want success before the work. And it's just not how it yeah. happens. Right. And failure is just, you know, a stepping stone to get to where you have to be. Isn't that what Edison said? He said, I, 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 so. I, I didn't make, I, I made 999 light bulbs that didn't work <laughs> to make the one that did. I mean, that was, that was his philosophy. Yeah. You know, and it's funny because, um, you know, we were going to talk about film production and all that. So I went online to look at the history of TV. 
And it's amazing how, you know, for me, I, I couldn't have sat there and, and uh, you know, invented TV or oh even goodness. the, you know, and it's, it's amazing how far it's come. And now that we have these, you know, these little devices, these computers that they call a telephone is just, it's, it's pretty incredible. And again, I have to say, we have to thank God that we have the ability to do this, you know, and not to say, well, I did it. No, so, I didn't do anything. I think I'm smart because I know how to use a camera, but ask me to build one from scratch? Yeah, Give exactly. me Give me 2,000 years, Victor. I'm not making a camera. <laughs> <laughs> I can't make one, That's it. but I can use it. Yeah, and you're using it in a good way. That's awesome. So when do you think you'd be able to travel again? I know the times are not good, but... Well, it's honestly, it looks like everybody just hearing different businesses, hearing different people that I know that travel who are anxious to do these things. Mm. It, it unfortunately sounds like people got to wait a little longer for like the full, like everything's cool. It's really looking like the fall. Mm. Um, that would be the first time that I would explore traveling to, to some of these other countries. I also have to be careful of my baby, so yeah. I also have that. If there's no baby involved, if there was no family, I might be taking more chances than I am now. I'm not yeah. going to lie. Um, I'm trying to be a grown-up. <laughs> it's taken me a long time to get here, yeah. um, and I just want to do things the right way, and I think that's how a lot of people feel now. You know, I've, I've weathered the storm for so that's long. That's the most important thing. That I'm ready to get back, but let me just make sure yeah, before I do We have it. to be patient. I just wanted to plug AIM real quick. We just have about two minutes left. Sure. So uh, it's a production company in Peekskill. So AIM, AIM is an economic initiative. AIM stands for Art Industry Media, and it was really an, ec an economic initiative for the Hudson Valley to connect people that are already working here and to drive business and commerce to Peekskill and the greater Hudson Valley. Uh, that is on artindustrymedia.com. Mm -hmm. People yeah. can search that. We'll be doing some events this year. Uh, when they let us open, we will have a, a public gathering, which we've always done, where people can come, either have a good time or network, doesn't matter. That is a really exciting initiative um, that was started a couple of years ago. Yeah. I think with AIM, you know, the thing that I would say about that is there's, in, in a, AIM is the place where I find hope. Mm -hmm. I, I know there's enough people who are on the board or on the committee of AIM I know people who want to be involved. There are good people out there doing good things for the betterment of businesses and the community. And we just need to have hope and that things will get better. Yep. And that I'm telling you, there's people out there that are, that are doing the right things. Excellent. All right, Jeff, thank you so much for coming on. This thank was you. a great show. And uh, hopefully we can work together. Absolutely. So, I'm Victor Margiotta. This is The Community Show. Thank you for watching.